Welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Community Report 58 for Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. This was published on the 5th of September 2022. Now, before we get started, I just want to talk about a couple of points. The first one is this report consists of two sections. The first section relates to an overview of the uh, update, which was due to be released in the beta test branch, and also a couple of new extra features. Then the second part is relates to fuel consumption and fuel capacity. Now, this is quite an involved section, which if you're new to the game or not particularly interested in micromanaging your fuel consumption, what I will say is that maybe this is that bit will not be for you, but I will give you a warning when it comes. Now, the second thing I want to say is that I've only picked up this report about half an hour ago. I've read the mathematical section about five times. I've done a couple of test calculations and I'm going to try and talk my way through it, but I'm going to give you this pre-warning that uh, some of the things I might say might be misunderstanding. So uh, be, be warned about that as well. So let's just get stuck in. It says, greetings, dear comrades of the Soviet Republic. We're aware that we failed to deliver the update before the report. and We feel the disappointment of many. Our plan was to release the Metro update for public testing before the end of August, but nothing unexpected happened. Unfortunately, we encountered several issues with the Metro infrastructure and then a critical issue just before the previous weekend of an extreme fuel consumption for buses, which was working on lines. The hot fix for the bug was released on Tuesday. I'm assuming that was into the internal test branch because there was a national holiday in Slovakia in the last weekend before the start of the school year, which meant we were not able to go back to the office. This hot fix required a few more days of test as it works. And besides that, there are a few more rep reports to CDT which we want to fix before we release into update. If we will be lucky to find the reasons and fix them, the update may be released next week, but there's still a chance that it may be delayed a week longer. If we would release the update with these issues, the disappointment would be worse and we would have to face a lot of unnecessary support requests and pressures to bear in mind. And I think that last sentence is very important and I can speak from personal experience that there is absolutely no point releasing uh, a software into a test environment, especially when it involves a wide range of testing, if you've got known bugs that need to be fixed and you know that they are game critical. Because what it really means for us who want to play the beta test branch is that we're gonna be testing something which the devs already know that are broken. I'll rather wait the extra couple of weeks and for them to drop something in that's, yes, we'll still have a few minor bugs and maybe some balancing to do, but the game is playable. And I think that is very important. And we've got a picture of some buses here. I'm not exactly too sure whether they just put this in just to, but I, I think I'll use this for the thumbnail. So I'll just leave that open enough so I can take a snapshot. Now, the next section is some changes. And I must admit, I'm quite surprised that the devs are still adding changes to the update at this late stage. But um, and some of them I do appreciate. Now, let's just get into the next paragraph, but let us focus on what is new in the game now. First, we want to mention that we've added priorities to for construction sites. What does this mean? Before all construction sites had the same priority, and the construction officers were dealing with the in a FIFO, which is first in, first out order, which which meant that the first place building was prioritised, and often you encountered problems because you needed to construct something first, but the construction office insisted on constructing something else if you did not pause the constructions. Now with this update, every construction site will have an option in, in its window for three levels of priority, low, medium, and high. Every construction will start with low priority as default, and you'll be able to raise priority of any construction site according to your needs. This would be useful, especially in massive construction projects with multiple construction sites for those who use auto search in construction offices. You need a certain road first or a medium voltage wire or a substation. Just raise their priority and the construction office will go to that first. Now, this is something I, I must admit I've, I've been hoping for for some time. And it's one of the reasons I often get comments of people saying, well, you don't use the auto build option. And this, the lack of being able to prioritize jobs is exactly the reason why I've never really been a big fan of the auto build. And I've liked to micromanage my constructions manually because one of the annoying things was is that i was always aware that it was a fifo system that meant that quite quite often what i would have to do is when i was setting up jobs i would have to delete jobs from the list and then try and select them in a, a kind of priority order and it'd be much better if that's a neater so if we take a quick look at the picture you'll see that the, the actual priority is on the right hand side just above the construction bar what i will say though is 
But um, don't go overboard with this when it comes out, especially during the beta test phase, because if you start overloading, putting lots of mediums in and highs, you're just going to cause as much confusion for the construction officers if you didn't use it. So moving down, it says from the other changes that are interesting, we want to mention that you will be able to transport some single car trams by trucks if you want to use them, but you do not have a rail connection from the tram depot to the border or the railway production line. Then you will be able to access remote aerial ship customs from your screen because there will be a shortcut on your screen above the mini map. And you will also be possible to purchase trains at remote aerial ship customs and bring them in by ship. But you need a harbour that can for containers to unload them. Besides that, there will be an info about which ship or helicopter can load the vehicle. You will also be able to purchase train tram sets at Tram Depot now. From other things, we made it possible to adjust tunnel duration planning for small pieces without the need of deleting the whole segment and updating the pedestrian underground entrances to fit between metro tunnels near stations. Yes. Uh, let's just click on the pictures here and see what we got here. Yeah, I think this is the, the distance. Yeah, it says beyond the borders. So what you'll be able to do is purchase the the train or whatever you want and then get it delivered to a port via a ship, which is something that's going to be quite useful. Um, I'm not exactly sure what this is. Oh, here's, here's a picture of the shortcuts. And what you've got is the shortcuts there. And I'm assuming the game will have the intelligence of meeting the ship or aircraft to bring it in is on top so that'd be quite useful now uh, moving down to the next one and this is the button you can see on the left hand side here we got a truck with a question mark above it and what this means is that you'll be able to click on that and it would give you the vehicle that, that can transport the vehicle that you want you want you've purchased that would be very useful i can see that being even very useful when if you do a really early start because one of the problems with early starts or even if you start in the 1960s not every truck can carry loads so i think that's going to be worth it there now before we get to looking at the tunnel picture uh, i'm just kind of wanting to go back it says because it mentions something about not using a rail connection from the tram depot to the border now i'm quite interested in that because one of the things that I've been kind of thinking about with respect to my Seven Crosses series because if any of you follow that series, you'd be aware that I want to put trams and the uh, metro system into that map. And one of the things is, how am I going to get the trains out to that without lay laying a rail connection? So that opens up a possibility that we may not have to build a, a conscious rail connection to the main network to get the trains there. Now, that's something I'll certainly be looking at when the um, update goes into the beta test branch. This bit shows the fact that you can now build tunnels and sections, which is going to be absolutely great because another question I've had in the back of my head related to metros was that how I could get all the curves in if these were built as long sections. So if you're going to, be able to build short sections like that, that means that we'll be able to put curve in. So you can have a straight and a curve and you might be able to build quite complex lines. It's also worth noting that the 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 line the rail the lines here are directional. So that means that every for every metro system is going to need two tunnels unless you may create a one-way loop. That's something maybe to look at. And in the centre, I don't know if you guys can see it, is the actual pedestrian tunnel. And it looks like what it does is it comes off the end of the platform and that comes out at the surface. So it looks very much like the metro station will be underground and then we'll have options to build the the pedestrian access tunnels to the surface. That could be quite interesting to explore as well. Now we get to the section where we get start getting into the fuel consumption and fuel capacity. Now, if you're new to the game or not particularly interested in this level of micromanagement, this is effectively the end of the report. I'd like to say thank you for sticking with me. For anyone who wants to go forward with me, um, I say I want to reiterate my warning that I've only read this through four or five times. I don't think I completely understand it. So what I'm going to do is give my interpretation of what I think it means. So feel free to challenge me, post comments, say I've got it wrong or my assumptions are wrong, because this does get a little bit involved. The other thing I will say is that we might be jumping upwards and forwards and onto other things to try and explain things as well.
So we're going to get straight into it. it says and now some additional information about fuel consumption change that we initially mentioned the fuel consumption will include some air drag factor to give faster drip driving vehicles higher consumption but it was implemented differently because of the potential performance issues before the update vehicles driving slower had higher fuel consumption than vehicles driving faster because the, it was consumption per second and it, but and it did not count for the actual speed of the vehicle so this first section here is is stating the current situation so we're now going to move on to what the new model is going to be it says now after the change the vehicle's consumption is dependent on its speed and the consumption over distance should be the same at all speeds there are quite a few vehicle types in the game but there are several weight categories and conditions for their consumption so it is not possible to show you the calculation formula for all but we can share at least the calculation formula for the road vehicles and air vehicles as these are the simplest hit here we can see the weight factors of all vehicles is they've fixed the issue over the difference in speed so that the fuel consumption is the same at all speeds but what they've looks like what they seem to have done is actually introduced some other factors to relate to fuel capacity and fuel consumption so i'll just show you very quickly this chart here but I'm not going to go through all of it. I'm just going to do road vehicles at the top just to give you some reference for what was going to, is to come. So you can see road vehicles now are grouped according to weight. And you've got 0 to 2 tonnes, 2 to 5 tonnes, 5 to 10 tonnes, 10 to 15 tonnes, 15 tonnes and above. And the text later on will give you a classification for this, so I won't report it. And you can see here that there's a max fuel weight factor which starts at 1 and increases according to the weight weight of the vehicle and it says a consumption waste factor which starts small and increases back up to one so they, they go opposite they kind of both increase as they go down but one starts at one increases to 3.5 and one starts at 0.35 and goes to one which makes sense really because the consumption would be less for a smaller lighter vehicle than a 15 ton truck moving down to this next section and it looks pretty intimidating but what i'm gonna what i will explain first before we get going is this first section relates how the game calculates the fuel capacity this is the amount of fuel that a, a truck could carry and then the next section gets into the fuel consumption but i will warn you that it, the, the the two different terms do get mixed up a little bit as we go through now it says the vehicle's fuel capacity depends on its empty weight and engine power. Heavier vehicles have more fuel capacity than small vehicles, and more engine power means that more fuel capacity too. There are five categories of vehicles per person. So if I move down so that you can see the categories at the top, there are five categories of vehicles personal cars and small vans, not to two tons, small buses and trucks, two to five tons normal buses and trucks 5 to 10 trucks large buses and trucks 10 to 15 and the largest trucks are 15 and uh, tons and over there are a few weight categories other vehicles types too but they they are less diverse than road vehicles and more fuel consumption for your republics comes from road vehicles and uh, they, they are more important than the early game overall fuel consumption late too later you may not care about the consumption that much as you may have your own fuel but also it's not important for those who play without fuel consumption in the republic they do not need to care about these parameters here is the formula for fuel capacity as it applies to all ground and water vehicles so that's just reiterating what i said is that if you if you're not into worrying about min maxing your fuel consumption this is not for you so the formula is actually fuel capacity equals engine power divided by 500 times the maximum fuel weight factor so this is the fuel weight factor factor here now what i will say is that this formula actually needs a brackets there between the engine power and the 500 i think that's what the dev actually meant because so this square bracket here is actually in the wrong place because if you do the calculation of the examples which appear later on if you do this and m multiply that through it what it does is it multiplies the fuel factor by 500 and then divides so you get the wrong value and then if we've got error vehicles it says fuel capacity equals the square root and i think this is where the square brackets actually come from so again divided by 10 times the maximum fuel weight now this is for aerial vehicles so this is airplanes here 
And I think the square root is down to the fact that um, aircraft and helicopters, and I presume ships will have a similar problem, have a lot more powerful engines so that they needed to compensate for that cal calculation there. So what that basically boils down to is the fact that now the uh, vehicles will have different fuel capacities and there is actually a calculator which we'll look at later on which will give you an idea of what that is going from. So if you bear with me, now we're going to move into something which is uh, a little bit mind-blowing and I'm um, being completely upfront, I'm not exactly too sure how this actually works. Then the vehicle consumption per second, the emphasize vehicle consumption per second, now depends on the engine power, top speed, weight category, and actual load. Vehicles with higher engine power have higher consumption. Vehicles with the same engine power but higher top speed have a higher consumption. And heavier vehicles with higher consumption, even if they may have other parameters of the same. So what it means is the fuel consumption will vary according to the engine power, the top speed, the weight character, and more importantly, the actual load that they will be carrying. Then there is the load factor for vehicles which affects their actual consumption. Road and aerial vehicles consume 25% more fuel when they're fully loaded. Ships consume 50% more fuel when fully loaded and a bit more complicated with trains. Each empty wagon adds 2.5% to the consumption of the locomotive. If they're fully loaded, it adds 5%. So if you have a locomotive towing 12 empty wagons, you will have a 30% extra fuel consumption. If the wagon would be fully loaded, the consumption would be 90% higher than the locomotive driving without wagons. There is, a, there is also an acceleration factor for vehicle consumption, but it does not have a massive impact on the overall fuel consumption. So here's the formula for fuel consumption calculated, which applies for road vehicles. Aerial vehicles are different formula, and railway vehicles have some hidden calculations which cannot be easily included in this. You can ignore the speed factor because it's a function of just to make the consumption over distance the same for all speeds of vehicle. Now I'm going to just run through the calculation uh, for the vehicle, but uh, if any of you want to work out the aerial one, that's up to you. So it says consumption per second. And I'll emphasize again, this is consumption per second is 0.1 times the engine power. So that's the, the characteristic of the uh, vehicle times 0.1 of times the top speed of the vehicle. Then it says the consumption weight factor, which is this figure on the right hand side here. So a 15 ton truck will have a consumption weight factor of one, which, mean, which means so the top speed will be times by one. And then there we go, it's 0 0.1 times this speed factor, which isn't clearly defined, but they tell us we can ignore it. Then on the end here, it says times one plus the percentage load um, times 0.25. Now I'm not going to try and explain those formulas anymore because I, I, I really feel I need to spend some time putting these factors into the calculator, which is, I'll show you in a little while. So moving down, it says, we know that this is quite a lot of information. We cannot share all the details. Most valuable information for you is that vehicles should be similar fuel consumption like they had before, but they will not consume more if they are forced to drive slower than they can. So of course, this was always the factor in the current game that if you had a truck that got stuck in a traffic jam or was driving on a slower road, it actually consumed more fuel. Other important things are the driving ranges, and these should stay that above 15 kilometers for one tank of smaller trucks and also exceeding 20 kilometers for locomotives. We also prepared a fuel consumption calculator, which will allow you to compare different road vehicles, to decide what is more economical for your transportation needs. Not always bigger is better because you need to consider how much vehicle consumes for its load transported over a certain distance so that the spreadsheet can use you use the effective consumption, this is 100 kilometers, as a gauge to compare different vehicles. This way you know now how much fuel vehicles consume for each transported tonne. Then you have the total fuel consumption per 100 kilometers, which is the amount of fuel that a vehicle uses to move 100 kilometers depending on its load. You can easily recalculate these numbers with different amounts and distances if you want to. The basic rule is lower is better, but here's a link to the calculator. What I want to do before I go to the calculator is actually read this final section because what you've got down here is an example from the calculator. So I want to read this bit first 
and then we're, what I'll do is then is go and show you the calculator itself because the calculator has got a little bit more information. Because of complications, we cannot make a calculator for trains now and planes and ships may be added later. But there is not much to compare as there is for road vehicles. Trains are much more economical than road vehicles are and then aerial vehicles are expensive just to use. Just for comparison, the fuel cost for passenger transportation using a helicopter may be 10 times higher than the passenger per passenger than it was worth to use bus. But you, but you can move passengers faster over a long distance. Also, some normal weight category trucks may have the same effective fuel cons consumption 100 kilometer as larger trucks have. But for, as, as an example, you can use a vehicle with a 150 kilowatt engine, 100 kilometer top speed. Normal trucks with 12 ton loads capacity has the same effective fuel consumption per 100 kilometers as larger trucks with 15 tons load capacity and the larger truck with 20 tons load capacity. If all of them have the same engine power. As an example, we can use a vehicle with a 150 kilowatt engine, 100 kilometers top speed. Normal truck with 12 ton load capacity has the same effective fuel consumption per 100 kilometers as a larger truck with 15 tons load capacity and the largest truck with 20 tons load capacity if all of them have the same engine power and top speed. Based on that, it may make sense to use smaller trucks with lower top speeds in certain situations and larger trucks in another situation. Here you can see a comparison of several examples of trucks. So this is just trying to illustrate that. So what they're saying is we've got a top speed of 70 kilometers an hour, an engine power of 132. And what we've got is an effective consumption of 0.297 per ton. And then we got um, the next one over here is a BZ252 dumper with a top speed of 35 kilometers, an engine power of 172. You can see here that the effective consumption is 0 0.3096. So there's not a lot in it between the two different trucks. But of course, what you need to worry about is the fact of the load capacity. What you've got is this one will move 12 tons and this one will move 25 tons. What you could do is if you take out that factor there, if you're moving something over, say, a relatively short distance, a, a, a BZ252 might be better than a T138 dumper. Now, I'm going to be completely honest. I don't completely understand this at the moment. And if I'm confusing you guys, it's simply because I'm a bit confused. I do need to run some calculations. What I'm going to do is show you the calculator. So what I'm going to do is just read these notes. It says vehicles driving empty have a lower fuel consumption so you can get minimal driving range when you set the vehicle to fully loaded. What that's saying is that if you've got a lighter loaded truck, it can actually travel further. And that could also be quite a useful thing to know if you say you've got a situation with dumpers which are moving over distance, but they're not waiting to be fully loaded. This consumption of vehicles per distance is constant at all speeds, so it does not matter how fast the vehicle drives, you will always have the same range, and it may take longer to do the trip. What we got here is the, the weight categories again, which I was in the picture. And here we got some notes on how the calculator actually works. So it says, this calculator works for road vehicles only. The total fuel capacity is calculated based on the vehicle's engine power and weight category. The actual consumption is calculated based on the vehicle's engine power, top speed, weight category, actual speed and load percent. Now that actually gives me a bit of information. I haven't actually read that properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the report. And what we've got here is the speed factor. So the speed factor is the actual speed. Let's go back and confirm that. Yeah, it's actual speed. So what that is actually implying is that there must be some calculation being taken at regular intervals within the game that's actually working out the actual speed. Now, I'm not going to speculate on what that interval is, but I'd say it's pretty fine, which then decides on what the fuel consumption actually is. And I think that's probably why they're saying you can ignore the speed factor because it function just makes the consumption over distance the same for all speed. So this is a, a kind of calculated factor, but at the same time, it's something that maybe the devs haven't completely sorted out. So moving down to the next one, it says estimated driving range should be the distance a vehicle can make on one fuel tank and then, then it needs to refuel. So that would be some very useful information, especially if you say setting up a long range route to deliver goods. That will give you an idea 
of whether the truck that you're selecting could actually do that distance. Although looking at some of these ranges, they, they're quite generous. 11 kilometers is quite a fair distance across the map, but it, it could be useful for spacing out your gas stations. So the next one is effective consumption is the amount of fuel vehicles used per tonne capacity. The mess measure is accurate for a fully loaded vehicle. So effective fuel consumption is but is based on the fact that you're carrying a full load if the vehicle is not fully loaded it show, it shows the actual consumption compared to the full, fully loaded vehicle but the fuel ton is inaccurate okay so that, that that's just a, a calculation within there so that's just related to the spreadsheet so there's total fuel consumption 100 kilometers the amount of fuel that the vehicle will consume driving 100 kilometers an hour a, a current current speed or load what that really means is that we no longer have to do speed tests for trucks like we used to do building the one kilometer roads and seeing how long the truck goes. Unless, of course, you want to test whether the mechanic is actually working. I don't think I particularly want to go that route. It says the effectiveness of a vehicle will be determined by the amount of fuel is needed to transport a certain amount of resources and passengers over a certain distance. Thus, you have the consumption 100 kilometers is, is the, as the main output compared to a similarly loaded vehicle. Yeah, I'm not even going to try and explain that. There's you can use custom load percentage for each vehicle if you want to compare the different transport. So this is related to the calculation. You can exchange the tons and load capacity for passengers if you want to get fuel consumption for buses. Well, I think that is probably enough on this calculator. If you want to get into it yourself, guys, you're welcome to it. I think I just I'm more of a formula type person. So what I might do is just um, run the calculator and then try and get an understanding of the formula. So to finish this report off, we're just going to read the last two paragraphs. It says, we hope this information helps to better understand how the game works and much better planning decisions. We cannot give you everything because it's quite complicated. At least we want to share the least complicated stuff. And you can see that there's always a lot of room for something going wrong. As you cannot, cannot see the formulas, what would make the bus fuel consumption break, specifically with buses working on the lines. There are hidden calculations which have effect, but you can also make a comparison how effectively the vehicles use fuel with these formulas. We will continue to deliver fresh updates from the development process, and if we find a way, there will be some useful information un uh, from under the hood. We may also consider making some changes to, uh, for our official communication. We may be able to make extra announcements during our Discord and Facebook. But for now, we continue to work on fixing the bugs to prevent us from releasing the current update for public testing. So please stay patient and do not forget that life, life is to live and enjoy outside the game. Stay safe and tuned for our next report. So that's it. We've finally got to the end of the report. Um, I want to apologise if spread total confusion because uh, I'm going to be completely honest. I, I need to spend a lot more time on this just try and get down to the details and then eventually it all just like it's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle or just falls into place and then the light comes on and then i know what i'm talking about and i'll be completely honest i'm not a hundred percent certain of what i've actually said but hope it's been useful and until next time whatever you do enjoy your gaming